Hi, and welcome to A Punk With Toys. My name is Lawrence, and today we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Low Light. Now, I'll let you guys vote on it. What order you wanted to see it, and oddly enough, Low Light was way ahead. And then it all started changing, and he just barely beat out number two. So we'll see him <laughs> the next day. So anyway, this is Low Light. Number 86 in the line. He looks absolutely amazing in the artwork here. Here he is. Again, you got your Easter eggs in the back. G.I. Joe. I don't know why I said G.I. Joe. You have all the weapons that he does come with. Uh, here he is, posed. File card. I'm not going to go into it. You know how I feel about it. And then on the back, yes, sticker here because I did get this from Taiwan. So I paid a little bit extra, hoping to get it out a little bit earlier so I can get the review done. So... Here's the figure, you get the height of him, the height of the actual figure, not the actual character. Uh, here's everything that he does come with. So he has a rifle case so he can put his sniper away. We're gonna take a look at this guy. There's his goggles. And we are gonna compare him to the O-ring version. Since I do have the O-ring version almost complete. Uh, I believe his submachine gun that I do have is a, uh, from the accessory pack. So anyway, there you go. Let's take a look at this. Let's get out of this and into this. But again, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content that I'm giving you, take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I do drop a G.I. Joe classified video. And I know I say it all the time, but proof is right there. There's going to be a lot of videos to come in the days to come. So anyway, let's take a look at this. All right, so everything is out. Again, here's the artwork on the inside. I've seen people do different things where they, you know, they're trying to make the artwork work so you can put the figure in there. Again, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to be opening these up and displaying them. But the artwork looks really nice. It is something, again, I'll mention the G.I. Joe team seems to have taken more uh, pride in what they were doing than some of the other brands. It is back to using the little plastic clips, with that, which I absolutely hate. i much rather have the... Um, the paper ties or whatever they were using. So here's your, here's your locker, low light, 86. Got to flip it around, the G.I. Joe symbol, 86. Again, nice idea. This is where all the weapons come from. Just not that excited over how it was executed. So here's everything that he does come with. So quickly, we'll start with the knife. So the knife is <laughs> very flexible. But as long as it's straight, I don't care. It's not sharp like some of the other brands that have really sharp weapons. And again, this is for three and up. Uh, I wish they would change that. Or I'm sorry, four and up. I wish they'd go to, um, you know, 13 and up so you could do a little bit harder weapons. But this I don't really mind. Looking at it here, you know, it's got a black handle. Uh, a little bit of detail on it. The silver, you know, the silver blade. So it does actually look fairly nice. Okay. Again, they're toys. Here we have his uh, goggles. They're red, as you can see, just like our O-ring figure. And it'll be interesting to see how this goes on his head, but looking at it, no issues with the paint, I don't see. Um, but it looks very similar to what we had back then. <laughs> All right. So the submachine gun that everyone said is Lady J's gun. It is not Lady's J Lady J's gun. I don't know anyone where anyone got that so quickly looking at it you get your uh trigger guard i'm interested how the hand how the hand will fit in there hopefully it'll fit in nice and easily uh, you got your handle up here port for blast effects that nice little detail and again not real big and then here is your oops here's your magazine looks like it's only going to go in one way which would be that way and if you can see, it looks like there are some sort of bullets uh, designed into it. So that's going to go up like that. Again, kind of weird. I'm not sure if this is a real weapon, but it is a real world looking weapon, if that makes sense. So we'll put that to the side. Here's his big backpack. Now you're going to be able to carry the weapon right up in here. This is what they want to do, is they want to make it so you can carry everything on his person. So, let's grab this backpack. This is the original backpack. We'll see if it looks at all the same. 
and quickly you can tell it's not really the same obviously the original o-ring has more stuff on it it does have the uh two straps on the top but this one doesn't have anything showing on the outside no pouches really on this outside here so they did kind of deviate they know they were doing a lot of things to make it look very similar uh, but i don't see them doing it on this one so Looking at the backpack again, you got the two straps. It'd be nice if there's just some sort of accent that's painted that would make it look a little bit different, but I get it. You know, this is your cost covering, you know, measure, measures. I'm still not a big fan of this because I don't need to carry everything on the figure all the time, but they did give it if you like it. All right, and then here you have... So this is used to monitor the wind and the uh, I think the wind, the speed of it and everything. Uh, so he knows when he is sniping uh, what, he's, what he has to work with. So nice little detail, no apps on it, but you can see there's buttons on it. There's supposed to be some sort of display. And then up there, I believe that's what is where he dials it to do different things. I forget exactly what it's called, but they did talk about it. All right, so here is the rifle case. I know some people seem to have a problem with it. I don't know why. Now, the one thing I will say I don't really like is that the backpack can peg into here. Now, I'm sorry, you're not going to carry the backpack on this. But if you want to carry this on his back, hold it on there. If you're one of those people that just has a standard display, your figure just sits there, you want them to have everything on it, that's what you're going to use. Uh, this looks really nice. It matches the, the patterns on the backpack. It does look to be maybe a shade different uh, gray, which I'm okay with. You got a pouch on it here. And then there you have, you know, a, a couple different pouches. So you can hold more stuff in the case. And the handle has a nice little handle there. Uh... Now, oddly enough, this is nice and sturdy. Will the weapon be nice and sturdy? I didn't check. Hold on. So this here is a little bit flexible. Not that big of a deal. Pretty straight. No problem. So if all the weapons were like that, we won't have a problem. So this here is just going to open and everything is already in there. So the scope already fell out. So do you have the rifle? Do you have the bipod? Then you have the suppressor, and that is where our scope is going to go. So let's remove this and then take a look at the detail. I mean, the one thing that's nice about this, if it is soft, <laughs> um, we can heat it up, <laughs> throw it in here, close it, and then throw it in the refrigerator and let it cool. So again, it looks like they give you, I believe it's supposed to be extra magazines here. So there's just a lot of different detail inside of it. Nothing painted. That would be nice. But again, that's something I guess you would get in a deluxe uh, or a $100 figure possibly. Not Hasbro, but anyway, that looks really nice. Let's kind of put this thing together. So quickly looking at the rifle, it is pretty straight. It's soft, but not that bad it's obviously not bent directly out of everything so i don't really have an issue with it magazine here that does remove and again i believe there's supposed to be a bullet inside of there but actually in the wrong way because the bullet is right there so kind of odd that I'm trying to get a better look at this so hold on one second all right so there is a bullet in there goes up in the magazine like so and i can say the stock now kind of messing with it is too soft so that does bother me um again the rifle seems straight enough but once you put everything on it how's it going to be so let's grab the original rifle and as you can see, it has this big giant scope on it. Uh, it does have a suppressor on the end of it. A really small stock. You got the same type of 
magazine there, and then you're gonna have the bipod. All the way to the point of having this little piece here, which they put a hole there, so if you wanna put a piece of string on it and use it for some sort of um, uh, strap, if you wanna create a strap for it, so. Here's our suppressor. It has some nice air holes through it, so it looks like a suppressor is supposed to look. It plugs directly into it. So plug that in there. There's your scope. Again, looks really nice. No paint apps on it. Again, I don't really mind. It's, it's great when they do it. But it's too bad when <laughs> we don't get the stuff. Uh, but you can only get, I mean, again, it's a $25 figure. You can only do so much with it. So that thing is very long. And my dumbass talked about how this was used. <laughs> how this was used for a strap, not thinking and putting two and two together. That That is where the bipod plugs into. So, unfortunately... I do some stupid things at times, so. There is our sniper, all right? And quickly, just looking at them, you can tell they are very similar, so. You got your suppressor, which they did give you a very long suppressor, which is more realistic than the original O-ring, but a lot of stuff in the O-ring wasn't realistic. Your bipod, it goes right down the front there. You got your scope, which you're going to have to keep adjusting because it keeps moving out of place. You can see it's not straight. It was straight. Uh, much smaller than what's on the original, but you want to be able to see it on the original O-ring. And then even, you know, your stock here is smaller. You got your handle. Very similar to what this weapon is supposed to be. So quickly looking at this, the weapon does look nice. Even the bipod has a lot of nice detail can fold up and it's going to stay there so everything on this looks extremely nice and again you don't have to have him with it he can be running around with it in the case so let's take a look at the figure they compare the figure and we can wrap everything up so just quickly pose him here if he's going to stay maybe he won't maybe he won't raise that up there articulation in case you're new to the G.I. Joe, T-Pose, nice and easy. You get bicep swivel, double pinless joints. You got your elbows, I'm sorry, your elbows, your wrist. Again, same here. Haven't heated him up at all, straight from Taiwan. Head looks up here, head looks down. Now, once again, the neck and the head both move. But unfortunately, I feel like he's not going to be able to get a look up enough to be in a sniper pose. But we're going to find out. It does have butterfly joints. But unfortunately, I feel like the butterfly joints don't really work all that well. Uh, because they're not cut out enough. Uh, I wish they were cut out a little bit more. Got your ab crunch. And then your rocker right here. The Jean-Claude Van Damme. Drop down pins. You only get so much. But it does give you a little bit more of... Maneuverability, I'm not a big fan of them, as I've discussed before. There you go, double pinless joints here. Boot cut, ankle rockers. So, didn't have to heat him up at all. Again, you never know with your figures if you're going to have to heat them up. If you do, it's not that big of a deal. I don't care what manufacturer it is. Heating up collectible figures is kind of part of this game, so... Quickly, let's take this. Take his knife. I'm gonna throw it in the sheath. Someone in the comments, tell me what this exactly was. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Again, this is how I do my reviews. If you're new to this, I like showing people firsthand what it's like opening out of the box. So if you are wondering how the figure is gonna be, this is what you're gonna get. So. There he is, right out of the box. Now let's take a look at him. See if he stands up here. And compare him to our O-ring figure. 
Well, we got to see about the goggles. So let's get the goggles on him. Looks good. Let's look at his face really quick before we throw the goggles on him. So eyes, eyes actually look really, really good. Uh, it looks like he's got a li little smudge on his nose. And as you can see, that is not on my camera. So unfortunately, that's just kind of going to be there. I'm definitely going to see if I can get that off, but a slight defect. I thought someone else mentioned something about that too. Um, anyway, uh, lips look good. They're not overpainted. You can see his blonde hair, you know, pulling through there. I like that it's curly. It's something different, and it looks fairly realistic. He's got his uh, little sock hat on, just like the original. So now let's start with the goggles, and how well do they go on? So, they go on nice and tight. They have a nice stretch, so not a big deal. And I think they look pretty good. I don't know what, what, what you guys think. Might have to kind of mess around with them a little bit more, but I think they look really good. Um, I like the fact that you can take them off and they don't feel like they're going to snap. They don't feel like they're too small, like the uh, original Vipers and the Cobra Troop, or Cobra Infantry, or the, the Cobra Trooper, I forget which one it is. So anyway, let's compare these two. Let's see how much they got it right against the O-ring. And I'm not saying right as how it's supposed to be, but that's obviously the look that they were going for. So, pull this up, lift up here. All right, so, you got your staff cat, very much the same. Goggles look very similar, and even the face sculpt looks pretty good. And then you got the curly hair, which I never noticed that it's curly hair, but you got the curly hair that's in the back. You got your red on his shoulder, okay? I would assume he is right-handed, so that's there to kind of protect when he's uh, shooting. He's got the two green grenades. He's got a uh, the holster that goes all the way over or the strap that goes all the way over. Again, he had it here. They also put a pouch right up here, which as you can see, he also has a pouch there. Pouch over on this side and the pouch right there. So, And then when you look at the buckles, again, buckles right there all on the... Uh, on the shirt and the buckles right here. These are little details that I never noticed on my original figure. Up here you have the nice collar. It looks the exact same here. And this is molded to be up. So I like the fact that it's not just absolutely perfect. That it's kind of sticking up. This one is kind of doing the same thing except they actually put a collar all the way up on him here. Um, the belt buckles look almost the same. They made it a big long rectangle. And it looks like they dropped the zipper down the crotch. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, knife on the side, along with the sheath. This one obviously was not removable. And on the side here, this is his device to track the weather or the wind. I don't want to say the weather, it's the wind. Someone will probably yell at me, say I got something wrong. I get a lot wrong. <laughs> All right, now pouches on the side here. Again, they do a wonderful job of recreating it. And even pouches up on the shoulder. Here he has the forearm guard, the gauntlet. He has it here, but on this one here, I guess it doesn't wrap around. It's still pretty much the exact same. All the way down to the boots. So the boots are obviously a little bit different. He has some silver in this one. So they made the boots a little bit different. I don't I don't mind. I don't need the exact same replica figure that they had back then. Uh, so there he is. There's everything that you can see comparing him to the O-ring. So let's get rid of this here. And let's see if we can get him in a pose really quick. Again, I would do poses after this, but I'm doing this to show you know, show you how easy or how hard it is to pose figures. And I don't do it just with the classified. I like to do it with the gargoyles, Balaverse, anything that I do end up reviewing. I like to do stuff like that. 
Um, I want people to see and have an idea of exactly how difficult it is to pose. So quickly, really easy to get them in the trigger pose. I did take, take the scope off because it's gonna be moving. Now I pry open the hand. All right, you pry open the hand like this. I should probably do this. Pry open the hand, it is much easier and it looks more natural than one of the C-cup hands that you would get with some other fingers. Of course, if you don't see it on camera, it didn't really happen. So there you go with that. That doesn't look bad. Put the scope on up here. And I do believe it only goes one specific way. And again, I am not a gun aficionado. So if something is wrong, then please feel free in the comments to mention it. There's a right way and a wrong way to say things. <laughs> All right. So as a sniper, let's see if we can get him into a nice little sniping pose, not using the bipod. And for the most part, if you want to get the stock right up against the arm here, you're going to bend the elbow in. You're going to want to bend the elbow in here like this. That way, you can butt it right up against his shoulder without any problems. Now, his seem to fit pretty well. Again, here we go. Just trying to get this all straight. I feel like I have the scope backwards. I guess I could look. I can look at it, right? Yep, big spot, big part goes to the front. And this thing here pretty much is spot on. It's not touching his eye, so it looks good. It's right in position. And there we go. Perfect sniping pose. Done really easily. Can we throw his backpack on him? I know there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, backpacks on, kind of sticks out a lot. I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit, but there you go, like there it is. Easy peasy, nice looking figure. No defects on it. I think the weapons are actually pretty good. Now, that scope is going to fall off a lot. So you're gonna wanna make sure that um, <laughs> you put that on after you start pose, like, pose them and then put it on there and then get him in the right position where you want it. All right, let's wrap it up. So final thoughts on low light. I think he's absolutely wonderful. The figure seems really solid. It's good. It's soft where it's supposed to be. Um, it's hard where it's supposed to be. I cannot believe I just said that. Uh, the gun isn't too soft. Yes, I did mention that the stock seems a little bit soft, not that big of a deal. Uh, I like the, uh, the carrying case. It's wonderful. You can put that in there. You're not going to have to worry about losing everything. The suppressor fits on. The sniper fits. And he shoots perfect. Um, and then again, they give you the submachine gun. A little bit different. I don't have a problem with it. He really does need a secondary weapon if you're a sniper. I wish they would do that with all of their figures, especially something like the eels. But looking at this figure, they did a wonderful job of recreating the O-ring version. Some may say it's the 25th anniversary, but the 25th anniversary is built off the O-ring, so does it really matter? Anyway, that's it. So that wraps up the G.I. Joe Classified Low Light Review. Again, I really like this figure. I've only had him out for a half hour. You've seen how long I've had him out. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to waste any more of your time, but you're still here. So you know what? If you're on social media, take a second. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, a punk with toys. The Facebook group page, punks with toys, because once you join, you're a punk with toys toys and last but not least you stayed here this long guess what i'm going to ask you to do take a second hit that subscribe button hit that like button hit that bell notification so you're notified every time i do drop a gi joe video now i am going to get out of here but don't go anywhere because you stayed this long up here i'm going to drop the trouble bubble video and right down here is a playlist of all the gi joes that i've done so far take care